pop out the chat. Where is the chat to pop out? Where's the chat? Hmm. <laughs> okay, well, I'll figure that out. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Uh, welcome to another live stream. And today is August 23rd, 2018, 4 p.m. PDT, uh, my time, Pacific time. And uh, today we're doing a live stream on current events. Huh. I've already popped out the chat. Oh, yeah, popped out the chat. I don't know why this isn't. Chat settings. Switch to non mode. Mod view. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. There's mod view and a non mod view. I did not know that regarding Twitch. That's cool. I wonder what's available in mod view. Switch to mod view. Show timestamps, readable colors. X, how are you doing? Dark mode. Look at all these things. I'm looking at the options in mod mode <laughs> on chat. And then we can go back to non mod mode. Okay, we'll go to non mod mod mode. Road Zade, how are you doing? Welcome to another live stream. Hope you're doing well. I'm very chill right now. I've been uh, a truce. Good afternoon. How are you doing? How's it going, brother? Going well, man. Going well. Thank you. Thank you. As you can tell from uh, the work we've been doing, the videos we've been putting out. Uh, We've been doing a lot of canning and making jam and stuff like this. Something might be up with your mic. Is there? Damn, you have heard of the. Let's check it out. Is it too loud, the uh, X? Or is it uh, too staticky? Hello, Chicho. Hope you're doing just fine. Thank you, Starsky. Okay. Damn, you have heard what Brazilian president said about the fires? Yeah. Yeah, Rose. And Independent, I think, uh, uh, or Intercept just released some information that some leaks, I haven't looked at it yet, that maybe they were set on fire intentionally. I'm just going to move the chat down, okay? And then I'll move it up for tomorrow's stream. Boop. Nicholas, how are you doing? Cron Allen Scott, yo. Mask of Raven 5. Hello, hello, hello. Richard, just gone midnight here in the UK. Perfect timing. Hope all is good, but doing well, man. Doing well. I've been cleaning crab apples for the last three hours. This is just one, one of the bowls. <laughs> that, that is about uh, one six of the crab apples I've been cleaning. Your voice sounds like it's down two octaves, really. I wonder why. I wonder why. Might have to unplug it. Okay, gang, I'm gonna unplug. Unplug and replug. Ready? Chicho, you all. How's this? Is that better? I should have uh, headphones here too, but I haven't set it up yet. Uh, let's see, this guy's going through there. Hungover. <laughs> no. Oh, no, I'm not hungover, man. I'm not hungover, I'm good. Better, is it better? Let me know. If not, I might just uh, restart the whole thing again, uh, the live stream and switch up because usually I have the mic plugged into the other fixed. Awesome. Thank you, X, for bringing it up. It would have sucked to be uh, hungover Chicho voice mode throughout the whole stream. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, awesome. That's good. That's good. 
I sort of uh, tried to get all the crab apples done, but I didn't get to it. There's still about this much more left to clean. Oh, the sounds good. Okay, awesome. Sounds great. I might have missed a uh, deep voice, Chicho. President of Brazil thinks it might done environmentalists. Wow. Cron Alan Scott, thank you for the bits, brother or sister, of course. Yeah, it wouldn't be done by environmentalists. It would have been. Uh, my take uh, definitely was set on purpose. Uh, and it would have either been the the hired goons uh, the army or uh, the ranchers that want to clear the land for livestock that's my take it wouldn't have been the uh, forestry people because that's a very valuable resource that's burning right now so uh, you know but th that's what's going on really in the world um, there are a lot of people in power that are under the assumption and to a certain degree they are right um, oh, sorry about the noise uh, to a certain degree their assumptions are correct that no matter what they do they will not be punished there's no consequences for their crimes right so that's the state of the world we live in right now where power is not held accountable and this is basically, by the way, to this level, for those of you who haven't lived as long as I have, I guess, who haven't experienced some other events uh, throughout history or lived them in real life, uh, if you're born late 1990s or early 2000s and stuff like this, the world wasn't like this, this extreme in the past where powerful people in office in corporations and all this stuff they they still got away with a lot but it wasn't as blatant as it is right now okay hello chicho i can't stay for long but figured i'd pop by and say hi great lasagna thank you very much for popping by hi <laughs> hope you're doing well man presidents after world war ii could all be considered war criminals yeah all presidents could be considered war criminals. Almost every leader of every country, to a certain degree, uh, not the, no, I shouldn't say that, not every country, but the countries in the Western world, uh, many of them can be considered war criminals. The kicker is there's levels of crimes, right? In the last 18 years, Western leaders have committed horrendous, horrendous crimes, like unbelievable, and they haven't held, been held accountable. And that has set an example in the world where the leaders of many other countries uh, and the leaders of the Western countries as they've come into power, uh, they believe they can get away with anything they want. He's back. Dante, how's it going? Yeah, Western foreign policy was a joke. Yeah, Western foreign policy is crazy. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the terrible state of the Amazon rainforest. Uh, it's economics. It's uh, business as usual, but just more blatant, right? They've decided not to just go out and assassinate uh, people opposing the powers that be that want to exploit the rainforest and get rid of the indigenous people and either burn it down harvest the lumber they decided to not just go to the covert route to do things but just straight out uh, get rid of the problem and burn the place down right there's not much to say i'm devastated about what humanity has become lasagna uh, the way you feel i felt that way in the 90s when i was doing environmental work geophysics i did the geophysics and all of a sudden i realized even though i was doing environmental work it was just it wasn't even a patch job it, i was just doing the work 
that the bureaucracy said we needed to do but nothing was ever changing right it was just to fill in the boxes in the bureaucracy to say oh we've done this we've done this we've done the environmental assessment we've done this we've done this we've done this right but business as usual so i realized along you know great lasagna to, to a certain degree and for those who are interested the problem was not with humanity the problem was with the centralization of power okay because humanity is amazing i know i've known a lot of people in my life and i can honestly tell you 99.9% .9 of the people that i've met in my life are amazing okay they want they want the best for themselves for sure for their families for their community they they cringe at the sight of horror and atrocities but the way centralization of, of power has managed our society is by making uh, you know rolling out certain things that have distracted people in a big way about what's important right people have taken their eyes off the ball off the prize right even if it wasn't blatant doesn't mean war crimes weren't committed before i don't think it's any good that it was just better hidden uh sleepy waves here's the thing right war criminals psychopaths they will do what it is that they they are going to do right criminals will commit their crimes right so i agree with you to a certain degree that the same number of crimes have been committed throughout history by previous leaders right but here's a problem the light was shine right it exposed the horrendous war crimes that were committed in the last 18 years and nothing was done right you can dismiss some of the other war crimes or say oh we didn't know right our societies didn't know these things were being committed the beginning of the vietnam war lie right how many millions of people died in cambodia and vietnam and laos how many tens of thousands of Kenny, uh, americans died right and other people from soldiers from other nations right the environmental devastation it was started by a lie right but we didn't know that lie existed until decades later the wars that have been started in the last 18 years it came out within months sometimes that the wars were started because of lies and nothing was done right there's there's a slight difference but it's it's a pretty big deal if you think about it dante how are you doing how's life solutions we are all communism wow we all come no solution is not communism <laughs> definitely that's more centralization of power if you can have more or the equivalent centralization of power of what we have right now chicho are you an anarchist um i i have libertarian tendencies i have anarchist tendencies i have socialist tendencies i have capitalistic tendencies i have chaotic tendencies <laughs> whatever you want to call it i i don't umbrella i don't put myself in one basket and say that is what i am because that is not what i am right riot how are you doing is people corrupt with power and extreme wealth wealth yeah centralization of power enables the bad people to have a vehicle to use corrupt to to use to corrupt the entire system 100 percent agreed morris okay because what that does is and that's one of the reasons imperialism was so powerful right when the europeans colonized africa right there were so many different tribes all over the place or the middle east or anywhere else for that matter so they couldn't deal with all the different tribes different factions so in general a lot of times they took one of the minority groups and said you guys control the rest we're going to arm you to the teeth we're going to support you 
to whatever level you want to. You can commit whatever horrendous crimes you want to, okay? As long as you allow us, the West, to have the resources in your region. You can do whatever else you want. I will pay you handsomely, right? That centralization of power, colonization, one of its main driving uh, principles and one of its successes, if you want to consider a success of depending, you know, based on what they wanted to achieve, was to centralize power, right? Centralization of power allows, as Morris said, allows those who are corrupt, who want to use and abuse and exploit the system, to have one node to go to to control everything. May it be information, may it be resources, may it be finances, right? That's it, simple as that. Yeah, completely agree with you, Greg. So I'm writing my dissertation on this as well as we speak, I guess. <laughs> nice. Yes, U.S. invading South Vietnam. And covertly against Congress, bombing the countries surrounding Vietnam without declaring war. Two million people in Cambodia died? Wow. Oh, my God. What? And not letting them have democratic elections. Um, Western foreign policy has never been about democracy. Anybody that believes that, that Western foreign policy is about democracy uh, needs to change their light bulbs, right? They need to turn off the boob tube, uh, stop listening to their in installed representatives representing the corporation of their institutions whatever it is they really need to have their head examined if anybody still believes that western foreign policy is about spreading democracy if, if anything it's about destroying democracy making sure that people of other nations don't have a choice of their own period immortal or small-minded people uh, will always become corrupt from excess power power in general agreed starsky the british army is a walking war crime yeah. so is almost every other army in the world canadian army what what did we do in haiti we supported the coup in honduras supporting horrendous sanctions in venezuela those were wars right asteroid doesn't kill us all next year <laughs> anarcho synthesism is that what it is i have no idea what that means i agree the west always was able to control colonies by letting collaborators have power yeah and collaborators is the key word there right there are collaborators from every nation right there were collaborators that um, collaborated with nazis during the holocaust there were collaborators that collaborated with the turks um, to commit genocide on the Armenians. There were there are collaborators everywhere, right? We just have to recognize them. You can tell who the collaborators are because they side with foreign powers. In general, right? Why do you think communism appeals to so many leftists? Uh, because they're uninformed, they're uneducated. Okay, they think an ism is going to solve all their problems. An ism is not going to solve all their problems. Okay. It's just, you could say the same thing about capitalists. Why do capitalists think, or capitalism, those uh, people who think capitalism is appeals to so many people, because they're uninformed. What is capitalism? Do we live in a capitalistic system? Absolutely not. Right? You have to put words in front of capitalism to define the system we live in right now. Crony capitalism corrupt capitalism it, it, it's it's a distortion of words right it's linguistics um, what is it called uh, uh, using words as as weapons right yes the gulf of tonka resolution was really insane western foreign policy has always been about protecting capitalism and investors again uh roads i wouldn't say it's protecting capitalism is protecting centralized power right okay you could say those who are profiting from waging for 
but you can't say capitalism it's not I, I don't believe no longer do I believe because I've gone through different phases right um, there was there was an amazing quote that I heard recently that said uh, if you're a 20 year old you have no heart if you don't believe in socialism if you're a 50 year old you have no brain if you believe that socialism is going to solve our problems so there's there's a certain amount of truth to a lot of the you know what do you call these phrases that people use I'll rephrase it as crimes against humanity that crimes against humanity salam Abdullah 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 1986 salam 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 alaikum <laughs> I think we're supposed to put the alaikum after it this is definitely capitalism uh, capitalism is characterized by private property wage labor and generalized commodity production for profit uh, Dante here's the kicker is capitalism also associated with monopoly powers given to institutions and those with power to control a certain commodity to control a certain currency to control a certain type of trade right to control land to have licenses to produce whatever it is they want to produce right this isn't straight out capitalism there's precursors that need to go in front of capitalism or words that have to go before and after capitalism if you want to define this as capitalism this isn't pure capitalism this is like pick any monopoly like the, the Western economic system is full of monopolies it's controlled by monopoly powers all you have to do is look at the uh, cell phone bills that people pay in Canada or our internet access bills that we that we pay to have access to the internet right it's insane why because there's monopoly powers they're protecting those in power monopoly laws protecting those power and again it's all connected there is an element of capitalism in there but it's like saying that USSR represented communism it didn't represent communism okay it was corrupt there had to be words before communism there and after communism I grew up in poverty and in a mixed ghetto with a lot of racial conflict and a lot of people who came from countries afflicted by imperialism example Palestinian Palestinians and Nicaraguans it definitely made me gravitate towards Marxism Leninism yeah it's once you get pulled over to one side and extreme people think the solution is the other extreme the solution can't be the other extreme because it's an extreme right and what extremism does is it um, it's not inclusive right extremism creates a bubble where certain people that are, have that extremist mentality think that is the only way to be and anybody that is different lives outside of that philosophy is wrong it doesn't work okay there are amazing amazing things that Marx has stated right Lenin has stated uh, big capitalist people who have stated like I forget all their names right people have throughout history have stated amazing things some of their philosophies have been distorted right hijacked capitalism is in many ways a, a a mechanism by which power is uh, concentrated is that the way it has been always the mask of a raven um, is there another way it can be how do we how do we turn capitalism into something that is decentralized right blockchain technology to a certain degree does that right decentralizes capitalism why was why was Bitcoin um, why was blockchain technology people assuming it was the solution to a lot of our problems because it provided anonymity and a decentralized currency right decentralized 
uh, a medium of trade to conduct trade right so that was given birth through the capitalistic mentality where people wanted to have conduct business anonymously and securely online right that's capitalism but that technology that disruptive innovation is the end of our crony capitalistic system that we have right now right this monopoly monopolistic system that we have right now yeah i agree mask of rain chicho can you explain to me the whole story behind the zionism stuff? Uh, look zionism is is people make the mistake of associating zionism with judaism zionism is not judaism like uh Zeus, Zeus, right? So Zionism to me is a political movement, period. That's it, right? Now, do you do you support their political movement? I don't. Uh, it's 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 on the on the same level as many other extremist political movements that people live in a bubble, and anybody that is outside bubble is the enemy, right? By nature, it uh, centralizes power. What if we could come up with a form of capitalism that doesn't centralize power? Here, let me ask you this. Blockchain technology, like right now cryptocurrencies, they're centralized. You can, you can tell by the way the coins move, right? It's controlled, right? Now, is that an ideal system? No, absolutely not. There's a lot of money, a lot of power in very, very, very few hands. Okay. The idea was right. The execution was flawed. Okay. Will that centralized power decentralize? Not fast enough. As far as I'm concerned, there's got to be other solutions to it, right? But what if we could come up with a system that decentralized capitalism? It took out that flaw in our current economic system where everything becomes centralized. Monopoly licenses are given to institutions and individuals and organizations by the centralized power. What if we could get rid of that? What would you call that system? Would you call it capitalism? Or would you put a word in front of capitalism or a word after capitalism to clarify what that system was? Or do we come up with a brand new system, brand new word, to explain what it is because to me pure capitalism means people have the right to conduct business to trade in anything that they want right that to me is an open economic system correct Dante accumulation of profit sure everything for profit yes uh, yes, monopoly capital. Uh, monopoly capital is a particular stage of capitalism. Yeah. So is that the only stage there is, or is there something beyond this? Capitalism naturally tends towards monopolies. The fact that you have to intervene in the market to burst uh, trust and monopolies is telling. It, here's the thing: all we have to do is hold power accountable, right? For example. There are corporations that have committed horrendous crimes, right? Why aren't we holding those corporations accountable, right? Because accountability is gone, is, has been taken away from power. Power hasn't been held accountable for decades, for decades, right? And people have been accepting this fact. And people confuse this fact with an inherent property of capitalism, which has nothing to do with capitalism. It has to do with the centralization of power. So how do we decentralize? The question is not how do we kill capitalism because capitalism is gonna exist just like communism is gonna exist, socialism is gonna exist, certain religious beliefs are going to exist, crazy people are gonna exist, In, uh, what do you call it, saints are gonna exist. Like, Everything is gonna exist right because all we've done is just define a word saying capitalism encompasses our current economic system which if you define capitalism as a current economic system sure let's come up with a new system
but it has to have certain properties of capitalism in there. It really does. So if you want to define capitalism as a current economic system, right, which is completely corrupt, then take half of it, throw in the garbage, half of it, a quarter of it still has to exist, right? Dante, indeed. Lenin speaks on this in imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism. What are your thoughts on the EU, Chicho, and how they're dealing with their part of Brexit? As an EU citizen, I've always seen the EU as a pseudo empire or collective who try to pass aggressively, uh, attack economically anyone who disagrees with them, such as Britain right now. Uh, Lions, 100% agreed. Your belief, my belief. The EU is a corrupt central institution that is trying to dictate the laws of every nation and every people, including means of doing trade, their currency, their their fiscal policy, their economics, their immigration, everything. The EU has to be, as far as I'm concerned, it will be a phenomenal day when the EU disintegrates. Okay. EU is an imperialistic bloc. Yeah, the EU is a definition of hypocrisy. <laughs> yeah. Workers owning the means of production is one way. Workers owning the mean of production is one way. 100%. Right? Like, for example, just to give you, just to bring it down to me, me working, I own my means of production, right? There is platforms I'm on that I have to go through them right now that they are accumulating certain funds, they're making certain profits from my labor, right? But that is the system that exists right now. Okay, that's why a lot of people when they say the gig economy is not good, I disagree with them, right? Because they've taken something that I've done all my life, which is contract work, okay? Contracting out my services to different things. I've done many, many different things in my life, right? And once, you know, I do the work, if I don't think I'm being paid fairly, compensated fairly, I move on right now just imagine if our whole society functioned in that form where all of a sudden the corporation wasn't treating their employees well and everyone decided to get the hell out right that would be phenomenal that would be phenomenal okay maybe they all decided you know what we're gonna get together and create another company to compete with this other company phenomenal phenomenal many would say that there isn't a way to reform capitalism and that's inherently flawed uh, i'm not entirely sure of that but i definitely see that being the case i again the new system coming up maybe we call it something other than capitalism but it has to keep some of the inherent properties of capitalism free trade trade among human beings has to happen right that's one way peace can come about if people talk and conduct business with each other then if they're both doing well in that transaction and require each other to keep their business functional then there's going to be peace right yeah most people who are capitalism who are capitalists often propose uh, bandage solutions yeah it needs to be revamped i agree with that fact 100 percent let's see this wow i missed a lot abolish what abolish borders <laughs> eventually 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 at some point we live on one planet eventually once there is equality once there is sensible uh, policies they give people freedom of movement, freedom, freedom to conduct business, freedom of religion, freedom of being, then we'll see us get together globally and just create one system that is fair to all. Otherwise, we're going down to a dystopian society with centralization of power and dystopian global system of rule, right?
That would be horrendous. Yeah, lots of fun left to Syria. Lots of to me seems like a prettier form of feudalism. Didn't the guy who made Monopoly design that game to be flawed to show how horribly designed capitalism was? Yeah, um, I'm just a hologram. Exactly. Uh, and they did. And they did. But that doesn't mean, a lot of people, it's funny when you bring up Monopoly. I've talked to a lot of people. I'm going to skip down uh, the comments. I apologize, gang. But I've talked to a lot of people regarding Monopoly. I've gone to different gaming forums, especially after I loaded up the uh, Monopoly videos we've loaded up, right? And people are like, Monopoly sucks. Monopoly is horrendous. Why are you wasting your time on Monopoly? And I'm like, dude, Monopoly is a great game. I love other amazing games of diplomacy axes and allies doom this they're like yeah how come you how come you're not focusing those are way better games than monopoly i'm like you guys are out of your mind you're taking this thing that is in a box and reading the rules and assuming that you have to follow those exact rules to the t right which is ridiculous there's no imagination in a lot of people that hate monopoly it's amazing to me, right? Which is the same thing that I, the same way I look at people that I hate a certain ism, right? There's things in all isms that there are certain facts. So for me, the, what I, the reason I made those Monopoly videos, one of the reasons anyway, because they're amazing. We did a whole weekend live stream of it to show how amazing this game could be because we took the game Monopoly, right? And we modified the rules. We kept the core rules to a certain degree, but we modified them, right? To make it a game which is challenging, phenomenal, uh, brings out, uh, creates a little bit of turmoil, right? Makes it super exciting, could be rapid, speeds up the game, right? Who says we can't do that with capitalism? Who says we can't do that with communism? Who says we can't do that with socialism? So anybody who, who says an ism is a bad thing, can we put ism behind anything? I don't know, right? <laughs> Let's assume the economic isms, right? Or political isms, right? If they're all bad things, then there's no imagination saying if they're 100% bad, then everything about them is bad, right? We can't, I don't think we can do that personally the uber driver is an employee they wouldn't be an uber driver if they didn't sign up the answer is the is in the name uber. Surprise, innovation socialism fuels the so let's check this out king canada gaming capitalism drives innovation socialism fuels the pro, pro, pro i can't i've never been able to pronounce this proletariat proletariat we need to find uh, a happy medium uh, our current system is not a capitalistic system okay not pure capitalism for example the innovation technology wise in china regarding 5g technology has blown away the technology what they're doing in silicon valley why because silicon valley has been given monopoly powers and they stopped innovating right they fell behind why why was yeah you know it's business decisions people make too but if you follow the markets and stuff like this there are a lot of corporations that have monopoly powers that they forgot to innovate and they've collapsed over there throughout the history of humanity really right Also, I think the third world is being exploited the fuck out of by in investors of the elite. Yeah, Rhodes 100% agree. Due to capitalism. I wouldn't say it's due to capitalism. Is China exploiting African nations to get their resources? Some people think China is communist. China is not communist. Is China dictatorial to a certain degree? Is it a, is it a uh, proletariat to a certain degree? It, for me, I consider China to be a corporation, right? That's one of the reasons why the Western governments are freaking about China in a big way, because 
take all the corporations in the Western countries, right? They have their own self-interest in mind. They're giants, but as giants, they're nothing compared to the corporation of China working harmoniously to do whatever it is that it's doing, right? So Western corporations will not be able to compete with the corporation of China, right? That centralized institutions. That's one of the reasons we're seeing these trade wars and this conflict rising, right? So they're trying to get the Western Western countries to stop buying from China. That way you're at least defang them a little bit until you get caught up to them, right? That's the Western mentality right now. The third world is getting beaten up by China at the moment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely correct. King Canada Gaming, I'm, I'm with Morris Morris 22 and King Canada Gaming on this one. They're uh, investing a lot into the third world to get a grip on the resources there. Roads, yeah, they're, they're putting money in. They're doing it differently than the Western powers, right? Western powers, Europe, Canada, United States, they went in and they did scorched earth mentality, right? They waged war to get a hold, to get a handle on the resources. China is going in there and they're building roads that, you know, they, they won't last long, but they're building roads and this and this to get control of the resources. Which one is a better thing to do, right? You can think about it that way. So all of a sudden the imperialistic, imperialistic powers in the West were facing competition from the East, you want to call it, from China, but China was not conducting their business the same way the Western powers did. China didn't go in there and wage war. China went in there and said, we're going to do business with whoever. If, if it's a dictator, we're going to do business with a dictator. If they're war criminals, we're going to do business with war criminals. If they're capitalist countries, we're going to do business with capitalists. If they're communist countries, we're going to we don't care we just want to do business you dictate the terms and we'll abide by them if we feel like it right if we feel, if we want to do business with you if we don't want to business if we don't agree with your terms we won't do business with you okay that was that's china's mentality western mentality was we want those resources what do we got to do to get those resources right he looks at my research thing i take it thanks I've written the article uh, review of System of Down's music if you're into System of Down. Do Chicho and System of Down, and you'll find the article. Okay. And I put out a video saying the first time I heard about System of Down, like what America was doing in Latin America. America, what Latin America, can't, uh, US did in Latin America is horrendous, or Western powers did. What is late stage capitalism? According to some, it's, uh, what was it? Monopolies? Late stage capital monopolies. Proletariat. Pro proletariat. Thank you, Abdullah. Pro proletariat. I think every country needs a just a tree to be small. So no. That being said, we definitely don't want uh, sheer. That guy is. Can you get a bigger poop? Then Justin Trudeau, yes, you can. Andrew Shear, bigger poop. Late stage capitalism can mean a couple of things. I think usually it means capitalism on the verge of collapse, as predicted in Marxism. Uh, uh, Mask of Raven, here's a question. Did Marxism predict the associate the end of capitalism with negative interest rates? Because that's what we're seeing in some Western countries right now negative interest rates. Um, I, as far as I know, um, I haven't read anything that said Marx uh, had that in his uh, thesis. China is what's called social imperialist. Socialism in name, imperialism doesn't. Abdullah, I agree. But it's uh, economic imperialism. It's not based on waging war. Okay, Other than a couple of places in their vicinity. Late stage capitalism, what people call the decaying stage of capitalism. There are a lot of definitions. King Canada Gaming, fair enough, and good point. China benefits from the state having the 
foresight to invest in the future damn i remember when canada did the same king canada i remember when canada did the same as well what a horrendous as soon as harper came in it, it, i wrote about this a little bit it, it's going to take decades to undo what the conservatives did to canada yeah late stage and now followed up with the by the liberals right yeah late stage cap stage is like people operate like cogs so it's basically a bureaucratic system to benefit the wealthy and generate maximum profit he's just another obama i'll talk to no action obama had huge action uh trudeau is not is are we talking about trudeau who are we talking about <laughs> i don't know if we're talking about trudeau oh justice yeah we are talking about trudeau trudeau is just a puppet he, no no one takes him seriously like he's not really his dad is rolling in his grave and hitting himself with his skeleton hands going what an idiot i created right that's trudeau obama three countries were destroyed minimum of three countries were destroyed under obama right millions of people displaced hundreds of thousands of people murdered right trudeau is not obama level Trudeau is just a pretty face they put on there to talk nice, right? Which is Canadian sort of thing to do. Uh, you know, you don't really want to do too much harm. Uh, Canadian mentality, you really don't. Uh, sort of the true essence of Canadian. There any if you meet Canadians that are into doing harm to other people, they're they're sort of transplanted to a certain degree, or they're the psychopaths in our in our midst. I'm generalizing here, of course, right? People, people most often say late stage capitalism to comment on total commodification, uh, precautious, uh, pre pre precarious work, gig economy, erratic economies with uh, frequent crashes. Is that what they refer to as late stage capitalism? For me, late stage capitalism is the complete centralization of power, which is what we have right now, right? And it doesn't mean it's going to go away anytime soon. Forgive me for being such a chatterbox. I got my MBA and MA with Abdullah. Comment all you like. I'll read them. Uh, inform us with a joint specialty in Chinese and Soviet history and was an active member of the Youth League of the Revolutionary Communist Party USA for many years. Oh my God. I'm trying to not dominate the discussion. Abdullah, share your beliefs your opinions and your experiences that's why we're doing this right why do we talk so much about politics all the time this one is about politics this is a politics stream constantly spooning our verbal garbage yet so many people including me tend to sometimes express my opinions on bullshit uh, we had our chance many times but continue to fail at solving our problems effing problems uh Seuss, if you have a nihilist mentality uh, then it means you're under the assumption that the game is over the game is not over right this is just one point in time that we're having this discussion everything is in flux and things things can improve dramatically uh, overnight or they can get a lot worse overnight right things can completely shift to another spectrum overnight so uh, i don't think uh, i don't think we can say that we haven't been able to solve our problems because we're still working on our problems it's not over yet right damn <laughs> i'm kidding what do you think of the hong kong protests okay let me re-catch up with the chat a little bit Hong Kong protests is basically here's one thing I'll, I'll say regarding Hong Kong protests right they the one thing they have in common with all the other mass protests that have taken place and that is opposing centralized power that is what all of these protests have in common they're in opposition to centralized power and what happens centralized power at some point uses force to crush them right hong kong protests 
and look at the same night as Occupy Wall Street as the Yellow Vest Movement in terms of their fight opposing centralized power. However, there's a big difference between the Hong Kong protests, the Yellow West Movement, and Occupy Wall Street. The Hong Kong protests started off um, from the top down. Okay. Occupy Wall Street and Yellow Vest Movement started off from the bottom up. So I associate a lot more with the Yellow Vest Movement and Occupy Wall Street than I do with the Hong Kong protests. Okay. Are you a Buddhist? No. <laughs> I don't follow any centralized religion or philosophy. Okay. Other than shamanism. Only uh, tankies are anti Hong Kong protests. Tankies. I don't know what tankies are. I agree, Rhodes. Tankies. What are tankies? I think Hong Kong protests are very complex. I think started with legitimate grievances, but has been hijacked by right-wing pro-British colonial forces. Abdullah, I'm with you, right? Proletariat, <laughs> the common working folk. <laughs> I gotta pronounce that, man. Proletariat. Given, thank you. Proletariat. Uh, toxicity mesmerized system of doubt hypnotized steal this album is that the order you you say Mas mask of raven raven toxicity fantastic mesmerized um uh, yeah but you know what i i love them all really there's like three two three songs that i don't like out of the whole compilation they put out i wouldn't call the right wing british colonial i just say there's nostalgic for the freedoms they had under British rule. Morris, what freedoms? There was no democracy in Hong Kong. It was ruled by the British Empire, right? It was complete centralized power, right? People had the freedom to make money, right? It was basically a hub, British colonial center for the imperialistic powers to have access to Asia, right? Or one of their access points I think people in Hong Kong just want to say Hong Kong and not be so much influenced by China people don't like change especially change for the worse possibly now the, all of you guys know why the Hong Kong protests started off right because China was trying to pass a law to be able to extradite people out of Hong Kong right now the excuse or the reason they were trying to pass that law from what I understand is because a Chinese couple or a Hong Kong Hong Kong Kongese couple a boy and a girl travel to Singapore or Malaysia or somewhere like this and the boyfriend killed a girlfriend right and whatever country he was in the police interviewed him there and they let him go and he flew back to Hong Kong and when he got back to Hong Kong he confessed to murdering his girlfriend right horrendous act everyone would agree okay and then China used that event to try to pass a law to bring Hong Kong into the umbrella of extradition treaties so they could extradite this piece of crap out of Hong Kong so it could face judgment right pay for his crimes now no one assumes that China was going to stop with that they were going to start extraditing gang corrupt po uh, politicians corrupt businessmen out of Hong Kong into China 100% that's why I say the Hong Kong protests are from top down so as soon as this law was going to be passed those who have been laundering money up the yin yang in Hong Kong went oh no 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 we need time to liquidate so right now what's going on in Hong Kong I'm assuming this is a lot of money is leaving Hong Kong because they know at some point it's all under Chinese control right so they're trying to get out oh. we'll see what comes of it right this is pineapple liqueur with soda
fix this up for a second. I'm gonna, I know I'm missing a lot of chat, so I'm gonna read uh, the ones that say Chicho right now. Chicho, what do you, what do you think of the growing presence of the Royal Navy off the coast of Iran about the tensions on the, of the past few months between the two countries? Is it just a flex or do you think they're preparing for conflict? Uh, Alliance is a dangerous situation because China is sending some of their fleet into the Persian Gulf, so is Russia. And they're sending their fleets into the Persian Gulf to protect the Iranian tankers coming out of the Persian Gulf and to provide some protection for Iranian, for Iran, right? The British Navy is going there and the Americans are there and who knows what, who else is there, right? They're there to try to destroy Iran, right? Is it going to turn into a hot war? I don't think it will. Because if it does, pack up your bags, wherever you are, go out, go into the mountains. Because things are about to get a little chaotic, right? Are, are there stupid people within the U.S. administration, within the British uh, government, within Europe, and the rest of the Western world that think that they will be able to start a hot war with Iran and go unscathed? I sure hope there aren't that many of those stupid people around um, and I hope there's way more intelligent people in the background uh, that will prevent them from doing this I don't think we're gonna go into a hot war this is a lot of muscle flexing and the UK is the UK government man I've never seen any Western government in my 30 plus years of following politics do so many stupid things and do so many things that are so damaging to their citizens really crazy what the British government has been doing seizing the Iranian tanker was the one of the dumbest things I've ever seen any Western government do period okay really dumb 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 we can't have kings or queens we shouldn't have kings or queens how how did the hong kong protest start from the top uh sleepy waves i think i i hope you caught it uh if there are kings and queens there will be a fight for power and there's all there is way too much competition in this world don't you think constant evaluations of various aspects in mind yeah I, I I don't agree with royalty <laughs> hey Chicho what time is it in Canada it's Miller time no, it's not <laughs> it's tea time it's uh, 5 p.m. in Canada where I am 5 p.m. Uh, not Canada but west coast of Canada okay so 5 p.m. here Eduardo 8.55 so your east coast is if you're in uh, Canada Labrador for Newfoundland the fact that China doesn't have a good track record with minorities and de uh, deserters is a factor too surely for sure for sure 100% uh, don't get me wrong I would not want to be living in China and I would not live in China I like my freedoms way too much and my life is not money centric so and I know there's lots of amazing places to be in China, amazing people, amazing food. I have many Chinese friends, and you know, I can eat, I've been, I was able to eat with chopsticks and uh, whatever since I was like 20 years old, blah 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 blah. But I would never live in a, in a place where you, your freedoms are so limited. Eastern seaboard, eastern seaboard. China wants to extract politician, political dissidents first and foremost. Dante to a certain degree uh, but I also think there's a lot of corrupt business people in Hong Kong that China wants to extradite as well okay dissidents 100% right and that's where even though it started from the top down there's legitimate grievances from the bottom up during the Hong Kong protests 100% don't get me wrong on that deal right however there's tremendous amount of centralization of power in Hong Kong and a lot of corrupt money there 
we've seen it on the west coast of Canada for a long time okay a long time so I have a certain perspective that maybe a lot of people that haven't seen the first wave of that money laundering hitting their communities what's your take on the current Italian uh, Iranian political situation will you endorse regime change no I don't endorse regime change regime change is the colonial mentality regime change by who and why why are we calling the Iranian government a regime and not the US government or the UK government a regime right why are we not calling the Israeli government or Saudi government a regime right uh, every country is a regime if we're gonna call the Iranian government a regime the problem is that the Hong Kong uh, Confederation of Trade Unions a right-wing trade union that represents business owners foreign-based uh, salarymen etc now have the upper hand in the mass movement as opposed to the Hong Kong Federation of Trade Unions which is mainly industrial workers and the working poor is that what it is Abdullah yeah the very rich right now in Hong Kong are stirring the fire in the protest I don't think they're gonna succeed I think they're just buying time I think they're just buying time so they can liquidate their assets and their holdings and pull out I think there's a lot of money being pulled out of Hong Kong right now okay and there's a scramble right now with with this movement okay um, I'll know if that is the fact if we see another spike in housing prices real estate prices on the west coast of Canada because that money is going to be coming in and buying up anything and everything they can right how is the US foreign policy responsible for the current right-wing politics in Brazil Oof. <laughs> sleepy waves that's a huge that's a huge uh, let me where do we start by the way she showed that the mass streams stop it stopped for the summer we're gonna start kicking them up uh, probably towards the end of September once we get into the math mode uh, just because it's summer vacation and I know there isn't too many people that are looking for the math but mask of Raven for sure we're gonna start them up again what do you mean by upper hand what does it change about their demands believing China when they say they're going after dissidents is like believing the US when they say the Patriot Act was about protecting us we agreed with you Dante 100% China is gonna go after as soon as China passes this law they're gonna go after everybody and anybody they want there's no doubt about that and the Iraq war was about spreading democracy going after corruption sorry it's sad that uh, in the US uh, time in the US time I gather uh, is the only candidate that is vocal on not uh, doing regime change and Tulsi Gabbard Tulsi Gabbard and yet they call her a sad pot Kron I agree with you 100% the only legitimate person half legitimate that I've seen from the Democratic Party is uh, Tulsi Gabbard uh, but she opposed the BDS movement right to a certain degree like I, I don't pay too much about it uh, on that in main part the, the fine details of it but I've heard her speak saying she's against interventionalism US foreign policy that's where it's the main issues are wait I don't need all of my data harvested by the state to be safe from foreign invaders wait I don't need all of my data harvested by the state to be safe from you yeah. <laughs> hey Chicho intelligent brew player how are you doing I'm now in Canada welcome to Canada at least you're catching and um, you're in Toronto so you're catching about a month month and a half of hot weather before the cold hits get ready Tulsi yeah Tulsi Gabbard you're right on the mark regarding Hong Kong Abdullah yeah it's it's interesting it's it's a big deal but it's a big deal for other reasons than the mainstream media is pretending it is do you think a no deal or bad scenario Brexit will result in a continuation of uh, um, of com conflict of conflict between Ireland and Britain I think it will uh, if everybody is smart about it if uh, the 
elites don't get the power, right? Then it may calm things down. It may turn out to be better, right? Uh, we'll see where it goes. I don't have too much faith in the UK political system. Like your leaders of late have been doing everything and anything to destroy uh, UK society, right? Uh, like destroy the well-being, the lifestyle, the benefits uh, of citizens of the UK. They're doing the bidding of NATO and the EU, right? So we'll see. We'll see where it goes. What's your take on Brexit? Brexit is a good thing. Personally, I think it's a stupid idea for Britain to do such a thing, but I have absolutely no love for Britain. So it's their funeral. They're shooting themselves in the foot. Lies, I disagree. I think they're making the right move. I, I support Brexit. I'm 100% against decentralizing. Uh, I'm 100% against centralization. So anything to decentralize power, I'm pro. Yeah, I'm from the UK. Brexit is a disaster. People voted because they were misinformed. Runes, you can't say anybody that voted for Brexit was misinformed and those who voted for staying in the EU were informed. That's like saying anybody that voted for Trump was a deplorable and anybody that voted for Hillary was not a deplorable. You can't make that general brusser. Some people might have been misinformed. In the same case, some people might have been misinformed what it meant to stay within the EU. I'm pretty sure if, the, if there was another referendum in the UK right now, if people want to stay in the EU or not, there's going to be more people voting to leave. That's my understanding of it. But you guys live there, so that's interesting. I support leaving on the premise the EU is a crippling organization and anything that can speed up its demise is a good thing. Morris, I'm 100% with you on there. Or racist. Rubbish. Absolute condescending rubbish. Boop. What was that rubbish about Morris and Morris? Rose people voting. Yeah, the Morris, I agree with you. It's rubbish to think that they were misinformed or racist. Do you mind quickly explaining US influence in Brazil? Okay, US influence Brazil. Uh, resources, oil, right? Venezuela, right? Obviously what happened in uh, with uh, what's his name? that wasn't allowed to run uh, in the Brazilian elections, you were put in jail and stuff like this. Obviously, that was a coup. That was a legislative coup. That was a legal coup. There was no doubt about it, right? That coup was conducted, had the full support of the United States and financial, financial support and logistical support and stuff like this, right? Um, the United States, the Western powers cannot have, cannot, the economic system cannot afford for South America or Latin America for that matter to be united, right? There needs to be conflict in South America and Central America and Latin America for the U.S. empire to continue functioning the way it is, okay? May it be through controlling the resources, may it be through controlling the food supply, the, um, the oil, uh, land, whatever it might be. May it be for preventing other powers from getting a foothold in Latin America, right? And if you want to go into the specific details of it, I would have to look those up. But it's just uh, basically the, what was the doctrine called? Um, Monroe Doctrine, right? It has had a role to play in Brazil for decades. Right now is no different. Right now is no different. The EU is benefiting uh, the UK economy. Uh, Rhodes, from the numbers I've looked at, the EU, uh, when it comes to UK trade, they export more, more, materials more things into the uk 
then they sell to the EU, right? I think it's like 60-40, like UK sells 40% of their goods to the EU, but exports 60% of their imports from the EU. So I don't, I don't know if I agree that the EU is benefiting the UK economy. Maybe there will be a hiccup, but I think the UK economy might start doing better if it uh, cuts the ties with the EU. I heard that the UK was trying to make a border between Ireland. And that is the hard border, soft border debate, Kron, right? The EU is saying if there's no border there, then anything can come in and then go and go through Ireland and then from there be shipped to the rest of the EU countries and they can't have that. So the whole debate right now is, is there going to be a wall built between Northern Ireland and Ireland, right? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. I'm going to scroll down, gang. Fucking riot, and so will ninety percent of Ireland if the Brits put a hard border in Northern. Yeah, Lyons, I it'll be crazy. I can't see that happening. Like seriously. And by the way, it's not going to be the UK, uh, right? So, uh, if the Brit, it won't be the UK that puts a hard border in uh, on on the, uh, they will build a wall. On the border there it will be ireland that does it under the orders of the eu okay the uk i doubt it very much like i'm just we're just hi hypothesizing right now but the uk will not flip the bill to build a wall on the border okay they'll say we're we're gone from the eu okay we're gonna conduct business as usual Okay, we have tariffs on your goods coming in. You know, put a tariffs on our goods coming in or whatever it is. The EU will demand Ireland to build a wall. Okay. Otherwise, they'll say Ireland will have to go as well. Uh, we'll see what happens, Linus. That was wrong. As there was... From the Remain side too. Germany is tittering on the cusp of yeah. Germany's Germany's economic uh, future doesn't look very good. France and Italy are too. Yep. Is that a sign of wealthy and prosperous bloc we should be part of? No. If the sink if the ship is sinking, jump, get out of there. Otherwise, the turbulence is going to pull you down. When it comes down to it, immigration is seen as the biggest problem in the UK, not centralization, uh, remain not not having any real fight against leave and their well, brothers killed or remain. When you say support from US, which party? Democrat? Uh, support from US. Are we talking about who? Uh, Joey, who are we talking about? Oh, from the Democratic Party. Uh, no, I think it's the business party. The Democrat, Republican, they're the same crap, right? It's the business party. There's only one government, one choice in the in the U.S. with minor fluctuations. Their foreign policy will remain the same. U.S. foreign policy will remain the same unless someone like Tulsi Gabbard comes into power, if she's not assassinated, right? No, I don't think so. They're... Uh, they're on their own agenda now rather than fighting for the country and they don't see that so they're no longer the IRA who freed us uh, from Britain and they're terrorists I'd like to see a strong Republican movement with Ireland at heart rather than a body count it'd be better if uh, everyone negotiated on their own merit and acted independently you can pretend the British economy fits the same needs as the Slo uh, Slovakians, yeah. Because you can service-based economy since we sold all of our industry. Yeah, in a big way. I agree. The reels and uh, contos are also mired in, in fighting corona. Ba, ba, ba. Yes. 
import Chicho. I'm gonna go down and read a Chicho someone said Abdullah be right back the second a wall goes up on the border I can bet my life the RA will immediately start bombing it and the north they're starting to come back out of the shadows and they're not being subtle about it are they that's unfortunate alliance that's unfortunate if they're gonna commit violence violence is off the tables that we're in a new age any institution any organizations that are committing violence they're in the wrong okay that's my take if the UK makes a border uh, hard border Ireland will you reunify by default so there'll be no border to build on a wall uh, sons uh, I tend to agree with you I tend to agree with you there will have to be some kind of agreement between the Catholics and the Protestants and the same crimes that Britain committed in Northern Ireland will not be committed by Ireland on the Protestants and stuff like this but I tend to agree if if cooler heads prevail that would be the ideal circumstance they'll have a vote but in those circumstances Ireland won't stay separate I tend to agree I tend to agree how broke will the UK be if they can't come to a quick trade deal with the US after they leave the EU um, I don't think so the UK is not from what I understand all the numbers that I've seen UK is in deep poop really the living standard is going down the toilet and there's no light nothing no prospect for them the EU is going down Germany France Italy they're all they're all going into recession what's the benefit of staying in that centralized power the ultimate dream a united Ireland sounds like heaven yeah. I, I would be full, full 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 support of United Ireland to be honest there's nothing in this world worse than an orange man so I want Ireland united so they can bugger off breach are you Irishman Lions is an Irishman I'm not an Irishman until the violence kicks off again because all the Protestants in the north feel under siege I hope not Morris here's the kicker if there's an agreement if there is a legitimate agreement where they sit down and go because it's not gonna happen from their leaders it's gonna happen from the people from the ground up they sit down and say listen we're gonna live together okay this isn't about Protestant Catholic previous crimes that were committed and whatnot this is about the present and the future do we want the cycle of violence and hate to continue or are we done are we done doing the bidding of these people in power that are waging these these political m maneuvers right are we just pawns or are we human beings do we want to live in peace I hope that is the case don't care about the damn prods I don't know what prods are this isn't helpful oh yeah lions I'm assuming what you're saying is Protestants no racism is not helpful okay is that what it is Protestants Protestants why shorten it to a pro Protestant yeah yeah damn yeah lies that doesn't do anything that does the exact opposite of what, what I was saying what I was hoping would happen right so if that is your mentality Lions then you will be instigating violence and if that's the case if that's the future you want your children and your nation to grow up in with more violence and more hatred that is your prerogative but I can honestly tell you what has that gotten you in the last few hundred years or decades right that's gone people nowhere you got to make peace irrelevant of people's beliefs as long as 
they also believe you have the right to believe and live your life the way you want to live your life A lot of the size. Ooh, I'm missing a lot of text. I'm gonna read this. I saved you, cried. I'm gonna read this. Uh, Joy D. Joy e Triple D. On her way to work one morning, Dawn, the path alongside the lake, a tender hearted woman saw a poor half frozen snake. Take me in, tender woman. Take me in. For heaven's sake, take me in, tender woman, sighed the snake she clutched him uh, by her bosom you're so beautiful she cried but if i hadn't brought you in by now you might have died she stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight instead of saying thanks the snake gave her a vicious bite i saved you cried the woman and you've bitten me but why you know you're you know your bite is poisonous and now i'm going to die oh shut up silly woman said the reptile with a grin you knew damn well i was a snake before you took me in as soon as i started reading that i knew where this was going by the way and i've never heard this before this is the same story of the toad and the scorpion right uh and by the way joy where is this from because from my part of the world from iran armenia and stuff like this from my childhood i've heard the same type of story where there's a toad and a scorpion sitting by the side of the river and the toad says i'm going to cross the river a scorpion says i want to cross the river but i can't swim and there's two versions of this one of them is a toad one of them is a, is a uh, turtle right i'll tell you the toad one first so the scorpion uh, the scorpion uh the toad says listen i'll give you a ride across the river if you hop on my back okay but you gotta promise me that you're not gonna sting me because if you sting me I'm going to die and I'm gonna sink down and you're going to die so you promise me you won't sting me it'll be the death of both of us and the scorpion says I won't I won't sting you right so the scorpion hops on top of the toad's back and they start swimming and then all of a sudden the toad feels a poke on his back and he goes what was that the scorpion says oh i stung you the toad goes you foolish scorpion now we're both going to die and the scorpion says oh i'm sorry but that is my nature when i get a little nervous i start poking and i poked you so the toad you know sinks down and the scorpion dies with him the other version of the story is it's a it's a turtle and the scorpion and the same story turtle is going to cross scorpion says i want to cross do what i can turtle says listen hop on my back i'll take you across but don't sting me so the scorpion says yeah so they go start going across and the turtle starts feeling a lot of pokes da, 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 on his heart shell or her heart shell and the turtle goes what are you doing what's going on up there scorpion says when i get nervous i tend to try to sting things my poker starts going turtle says but i've told you if you accidentally end up skinning my stinging my flesh i'll die and we'll both die and the scorpion says i can't help it that is my nature turtle says well if that is your nature then we cannot travel together and the turtle goes under the water and the scorpion dies and the turtle comes up the other side right two different versions of the same story uh, da, 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 da. some said they don't like where's man and i'm the racist why are you that you know what i've someone lies someone's called me on that as well right here's the kicker between the the term using orange man and damn prods right when you say damn prods you're talking about a general you're talking about many tens of millions of people right tens of millions of people right when people say orange man you know exactly who that one person is that they're talking about it's a different game however i agree with you i stopped using the term orange man someone that was supporting my work for many years heard me say it once right during one of these political live streams and they sent me a really nice comment saying that listen 
they didn't like what I said. They've been supporting my work and they explained themselves very well, right? And my reply to them was, we're all human, we make mistakes and there's words that we've been using that we don't necessarily think about. It's just become habit of using it or we've heard it through social media or whatever it is. And at the time we used it, it was being used a lot, right? So it made it into my vocabulary. The guy called me out on it. He's not watching now, right? Most likely. I thank them for calling up, for calling me out on it, and I've changed my vocabulary. There's nothing wrong with being called out when you make a mistake and deciding, thinking about it and saying, you know what? Maybe I'll change my vocabulary. Disregarding the views and political opinions of people involved in the process to fit your own uh, in ideation is a surefire way to reignite conflict and more bloodshed. But you said it. Yes. <laughs> <The> roads. <laughs> There's a difference between Protestants and Orange Man. Yeah, big difference. My God. Protestants are all right. Orange Man just need <laughs> No. Lions, no violence lions brother dude forget about the violence the violence gets you nowhere i can honestly tell you the violence gets you nowhere right let's assume you're committing violence you're going to come across you might hurt a lot of people along the way right at one at some point you're going to come across someone that might be a little bit more powerful than you're going to hurt you then you're going to feel what it feels like down to your bones of what it means to be hurt to be beat right hopefully at that point you're going to start thinking about all the people you beat down right and you're going to start having regrets so people have asked me before uh, i'll tell you this lines right people have asked me this before they've asked me hey chicho have you ever punched someone Yes, I've been in fights. And they've asked me, have you ever been punched? I go, yeah, I've been hurt, right? And my reply, the conversation is usually fluid. And my reply is, I didn't like hitting people, but I dislike being hit more, right? I slowly changed my behavior. And I haven't been in a physical confrontation for a long time long 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 time because you can always walk away okay and you can always instigate peace if you can because in the long run hurting people doesn't feel good being hurt feels even worse the best thing to feel is not getting into a physical confrontation and the relief you feel from not being in that type of conflict is amazing lions brother i'm telling you try it out you're gonna love it you're gonna love it it's life changing mind opening it really is racist for the low, low price of six pounds a month i'm gonna go i'm gonna scroll down ah but chicho if i may ask what do you think of the adage nonviolence requires your enemy to have a conscience here's the thing Abdullah you can protect yourself you can protect your family but if you're going out to hurt other people right preemptively that is wrong right so by all means if someone's attacking you you have a right to protect yourself ideally ideally by submission okay however when you're taking on centralized power okay this is one thing that people and this is this is the thing that i've learned right if you're taking on centralized power no matter how much violence you commit centralized power can always commit more violence more horrendous acts of violence without with impunity without being held accountable right so the best 
form of action when it comes to trying to change our way of being when it comes to political economic ways is nonviolence. okay may it be through your business practices may it be through who you associate with may it be through uh, the way you consume food may it be through what you do within your community right sometimes it takes usually it takes a long time to bring out bring about positive changes i'm with chris hedges on this front okay chris hedges 100 percent believes in non-violent uh, forms of bringing about change in centralized power or taking power away from centralized institutions and i agree with that because those centralized institutions will always commit more horrendous crimes than any groups can ever 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 even dream of doing ah uh, here now orange man lines i'm going to skip some of your uh, orange man comments brother everyone would agree that the american revolution was a good thing but there was a lot of bloodshed roads everyone would not agree with that howard zinn would not agree with that okay killing a lot of people i don't agree with that whatever little i know about the american revolution some of the causes and the political gains of play and stuff like this howard zinn okay crump thank you thanks for the support brother uh where are we what was the comment uh american revolution uh Rhodes. howard zinn has a lecture a couple of lectures twice i've seen two videos of the same lectures that he's given where he talks about the three good wars uh world war ii american uh civil war and uh i forget what the third war was and he makes a very good argument against war and his philosophy was this and he he was a bomber in world war ii right he was amazing right his philosophy is this there's never a re need for war there's only need for insurrection okay which to a certain degree is, is still leading on form you know towards violence against centralized institution um i don't believe in violence against centralized institutions or against individuals preemptively or anything like that self-preservation for sure right but you can't say everyone would everyone agrees that the american revolution was a good thing no everyone does not agree this absolutely not and howard zinn has written history books right so uh, it's not a correct statement and i don't think the american revolution was only about to become free oh the, the other one was the american civil war right american revolution to break apart from uk power and the colonial powers of europe and uh, american civil war which was uh, north and south and all that jazz right supposedly i mean back when they were fighting for a piece of land that doesn't happen anymore so for example here Rhodes one of the examples that he gave uh, Howard Zinn gave regarding the American Revolution who was it good for was it good for the indigenous people living in the Americas it was genocidal for them because as soon as American states got their independence they turned their guns on the people that were living in the Americas right and 95 percent 95 plus percent of the population was murdered right who was it good for was it good for the banking systems or Wall Street New York who was it good for the people coming across and all of a sudden they were getting land because they were white was it good for the blacks was it good for the Mayans was it who was it good for or really who was it good for All right got to go here's some soul for the road ah oh, thanks grun have a great day have a great day i never really thought american revolution as a gray area of history 100 percent for protecting them uh from french invasion they were taxing them their share of the national defense of british north america do some research into it morris zen was amazing 
I miss his voice in public discourse. Met him back. Yeah, Abdullah, man, I wish I met him. He was amazing. And right now, there isn't any voice that even resembles Howard Zinn's voice. Yeah, Morrison agreed. Insurrection more often than not becomes war. That's one reason I disagree with Howard Zinn to a certain degree. I think peaceful mass general strikes are the way to go. General strikes are devastating for centralized powers. Speaking of past events, has anyone mentioned that you look like <laughs> no Kao Pok Chan? Uh, Serge Tankian, yes. Uh, Bob Ross, the way I do my ASMR, yes. Um, who is that? Welcome back, Carter. Look like him too. If you think I look like that person, <laughs> you need to get out of your little bubble, brother. <laughs> Depending what kind of insurrection it is and who supports it, uh, a successful insurrection becomes uh, one of the unfortunate inevitabilities. Yeah. Native people were close to being genocided, very close. And a genocide was committed on them, roads, right? Just because they didn't disappear off the face of the earth doesn't mean a genocide was not committed. A genocide was committed, without a doubt. Without a doubt. You seem like a professor at a community college, but you got fired for dropping acid while uh, teaching. Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but yeah, when, when you drop acid during teaching. Halva. I'll drop some halva during a live, live stream, though. Here's my halva supply. A beanie doesn't make you a professor. <laughs> no. I saw an interesting article uh, before about how war rapidly escalates technological advancements due to each side trying to outdo each other. An example used was the Second World War, war Second World War, how it started with some biplanes but ended with jet planes uh, being used is strangely true if you look at most conflict in modern history yeah and right now what we're seeing lines uh, i would say we're seeing those advance advancements right now with technology and the first place we've been seeing them is uh, uh in war right now is through technology how we're there's technological warfare being committed right now right we're seeing it stop next was the equivalent of hiroshima not in human terms but in terms of weaponry being used right hiroshima atomic bombs were introduced into warfare stop stats next was a major major uh, software attack that could be modified to devastate a country first and last morning thank you dante for taking care of business sorry thought this was america um this is the world this is it's not America this is just because twitch is centered in the United States it doesn't mean everyone's from the United States right we're talking globally this is the world cross between Serge and Bob thank you very much for the compliment Can someone kick the cow rod? <laughs> but it uh, took violence to overthrow an empire. It's not possible to be non-aggressive. I disagree. Uh, you can protect yourself, but you don't have to be. Uh, wars of, for example, roads. Wars of aggression are war crimes, right? So defensive wars, if you're protecting yourself, okay. 
But if you're waging wars of aggression, those are war crimes. It should apply to human beings as well. It's a crime to attack someone. What's that food called? Uh, uh, halva. Halva. I've been trying to find that for years. Last had it in Tel Aviv. I couldn't remember the name. Halva. H. Halva. H A L V A. Halva. Oh, someone wrote it already. <laughs> Brilliant. Cheers, man. Nice, Morris. Hope you love it. What is halva? Uh, tahini and uh, sugar. That might. Be, uh, I think it's just tahini and sugar. Kind of cookie. It's uh, very sweet. Yeah. What is that? Uh, what is that? It looks delicious. It looks like cheese to me. No, it's very sweet. It's very sweet. Actually, cheese would be really good too. I should bring some brie out. Okay, I actually like this guy. So, but okay, cow, that's okay. Wow, bro, chill, hey, cow. Come on, brother, you gotta chill a little bit. Okay. I'm the Yang to Chicho's Yang. <laughs> I assume Twitch was censored wherever Amazon is. I e tax haven tax haven sick is schizo sick is it schizo ah okay sick is schizo sick is schizo oh that's so hard to say sick is it sick is it schizo say it one time fast forget about five times you know something else that's sweet aspartame <laughs> lions that is rather aggressive you know what lions say seems you're a bit of a uh, i mean uh, if i like a guy i wouldn't call him yeah I mean, or slag him yeah not if you not 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 unless you know me in person very well and i don't even you know tolerate that with even close friends right <laughs> sit kiss our man in sit <laughs> sit kiss our man in Sick is our Madden. <laughs> Sick is schizo laughs at Sit Kiss our Madden. Oh man, your your names are hard. Your names are hard. Hard, hard, hard. Wow, I caught up with chat. Whew. Only after an hour and forty five minutes. My oh my. Oh my oh my. Crazy, crazy. People struggle with it especially in game chats no kidding <laughs> i would i would stick with sick sick is good sick or schizo schizo sick it's schizo sick it's schizo sick it's schizo. oh i can say it fast now sick it's schizo sick it's schizo tomorrow we're gonna be cooking up crab apples i got about this much more to clean this is about uh one six of how much I've cleaned so far okay so we're gonna do a lot of crab apple cooking tomorrow lions we're doing good you want to see what it looks like inside a crab apple let's end this end this crazy amazing you honor me brother sick as it's good still sick as it's still just try to get through life life-ish inshallah yeah just trying to get through life inshallah yeah crab apple inside a crab apple and when you eat it you can eat it it's delicious very tart Damn, I'm going to miss the crab off the stream because of prom. Oh, lions! Or Debs. As we call it here in Ireland, Debs. Well, we're going to be streaming from 1 p.m. I'm going to cut it this way for you guys. Until, until I get really tired. <laughs> it's going to be a while. I don't even know if we're going to be able to stream it all. 
Very beautiful. Crab apples, right? Um, the time is 5.45 here. 5.45 p.m. Mm, what's going on? Will you be my sensei? No, I don't want to be anybody's sensei. I just want to be Chicho. I have a very important match coming up. Man, I'm making crab all jelly right now. Are you? Right on. 437B. Bro, what are you doing? I guess we're getting some trolls coming in, maybe. What are the odds? You're so awesome. Please be my dad. No, I don't want to be anybody's dad. That's way too much responsibility, man. Sorry if you covered this already, but what are your thoughts on where YouTube seems to be headed? We haven't talked about it yet. Um, YouTube, uh, other, let's put it this way. Other platforms, video sharing platforms, are going to, are most likely getting a huge influx of people going there, right? YouTube censorship is kicking in. Uh, YouTube's algorithms are reducing the number of views on independent creators like me. Uh, the revenue being shared through YouTube is decreasing, right? So they're only pushing a very high count, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, high subscribe channels, right? So the independent voice is disappearing off YouTube to a certain degree. I'm going to stay on there until the end, right? Because my whole central central focus is, is to teach mathematics because once people learn mathematics, they can analyze the data coming in and they'll know what's what, like period. They don't have to rely on centralized institutions or individuals or other types of institutions to interpret the mathematics for them to fool them into supporting their causes or whatever it is. Once people know math, the world will be a better place. So I'm going to stay on YouTube until the end. Okay. either the end of me or end of YouTube. At the same time, I'm loading stuff on BitChute, and at some point I'll start loading stuff on different platforms as well, and hopefully once we set up our own website, right? If I, you know, once I get enough funds together and enough support coming in from all the viewers and stuff like this, we'll have streaming on our own site where there won't be any censorship, right? Uh, or YouTube is centralized power. Google has committed, uh, has made some horrendous, horrendous business decisions when it comes to uh, dealing with um, some of the choices they've made. Where do you get all those apples? I picked all these. I picked all these over the weekend. We went to a festival, music festival over the weekend, and uh, there was a crab apple tree. This is, I picked from this crab apple tree before. There was a crab apple tree and uh, Pick the whole bunch. Where's your forging? I'm not forging for all my food, but during the summer, spring, summer, and fall, I forage for a lot of food. Uh, like so far, we've made uh, plum jam, uh, blackberry jam, apple. applesauce and we're gonna make crab apple butter tomorrow and all of those four I picked myself like those are things that I picked myself wow the Sun is shining on the chat so I can barely see it let me move the chat over look at the man's beard of course he forges all this food. <laughs> Done. Let's get down to the brass tax. Can jet fuel melt steel beams? Uh, not as far as I know. According to physics, no. Right? But uh, there's something else called, uh, what's it called? Uh, that can melt uh, steel beams. What's that thing called? Why don't you, uh, why don't you tell us, Cal? Um, what's it called? Uh, da -da -da -da. There's some chemical, something that burns uh, steel. And there's experiments done on it and makes it molten, right? Funny that. Apparently people can ba barely get by on YouTube ad money anymore. Yeah, Dante, YouTube ad money has gone down a lot. Yeah. 
yeah, sucks for people on YouTube. I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Alliance based. Yeah, YouTube, like for me, uh, I'm gonna keep on doing what I'm doing. I'm for sure I'd like to make this sustainable uh, because I can roll out a lot more things, right? Acquire new equipment, set up a space, uh, get people coming in, set up the website, start creating the modules for mathematics and stuff like that. For sure. Uh, and I'll work on it. And this, this week coming up, or next week coming up, uh, the odds are I'm going to list a lot more comics on eBay because I want to generate the revenue coming in because I do want to roll out some of these things. So it's just, for me, uh, if I had, like, YouTube, if YouTube and support money from Patreon and subscribe store and direct donations and Twitch and stuff like this, if more money was coming in, I would be able to roll out a lot more things. But I'm going to do this no matter what. It just means it's going to be take a lot longer to roll out and the quality is going to be based on what equipment I can get and how much time I have and whatnot, right? It, that is what it is. Uh, so it all depends why you're in it. I'm in it for uh, for reasons I've explained previously. Sadly, in the end, the vast, vast, vast majority of traffic online nowadays is smartphones, sounds, ad blocks. So YouTube is just going to get bigger and bigger until the DMC spam finally overtakes video game channels. I hope not. Don't let your memes be dreams. I want to know more proofs and analysis. Me too, perps. For it sounds like such a dirty word. It makes it seem illegal. I don't know if it's illegal. I doubt it. That's good to hear. Uh, schizo. I've been following you for the last couple of years. You got me back into collecting comics. Can't think. Ah, oh, my pleasure, Schizo. And my apologies. It's pretty damn expensive. <laughs> but there's amazing stuff coming out. Like, wow, wow, wow. Do you grow most of your own food that you use in the streams? Uh, no. Uh, most of the food that... Uh, most of the food? Yeah, most of the food that I've used on my streams, I've harvested. Okay. Um, the herbs and stuff, yeah, we're growing here. I'm going to be harvesting some grapes that we have. I harvested the raw grapes that we have, we use for cooking and stuff. So some that we're growing ourselves, but a lot that is from outside, from the forest or whatever it might be. Thermite, that's what it is. That That's what burns steel beams and brings down three towers while only two of them were hit. Actually, more than three hours, but three skyscrapers, but only two were hit with them. What? What? Really? Huge. Can we stop talking about food? It's nearly 2 a.m. and I don't want to go downstairs to your back of cheese filled. <laughs> cheese filled with uh, guilt. No, don't do it. Don't do it, Lions. Don't do it. Hey, Chicho. Didn't think you would still be on um, when I got home happy to catch you a few minutes awesome awesome reno how are you doing reno mike expensive and that's an understatement yeah have fun feels good man good 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 okay gang fun times fun times nice discussions gang uh, thank you for that by the way thank you for that Thank you for the mods uh, taking care of business. I know Dante, you have to take care of a little business maybe. Uh, Cal, I'm glad you chilled a little bit, calm down. It's a good thing, right? Uh, some cost more than my house. Ch -ch -ch, indeed, it's been lovely. Yeah, Abdullah. Thank you for the info, Abdullah. By the way. And for sure, you're welcome to post as much as you got your background in Chinese and Russian you got the stuff share as much as you can brother share as much as you can so George Bush did it um, Cal I don't know who did it all I know is all I know is uh, first of all George Bush didn't do shit the guy the guy he, he, he's not stupid but he's just a puppet he's like Trudeau what okay the only thing we're 100% sure of okay Iraq was not involved and 
The 9-11 report was pure garbage, okay? The official report. So we know what the government told us was a lie. And we know the country that we invaded, we destroyed, had nothing to do with it. Why aren't people held accountable? What's going on? Oh, that's right. Obama came into power and he said we should forget all that and not hold anyone accountable. Hmm. Isn't that nice of him? Oh, I didn't he just bought a fifteen million dollar mansion, didn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. Time for shower, sleep, meds, and some Fraser. Awesome Abdullah. My PhD advisor says you have an uh, encyclopedia knowledge of the history of global uh, radical left. I think is exaggerating a bit, but I was uh, flattered. Awesome. I actually know who did it. Here's the here's the next question. Have we seen aliens? Have we seen aliens? I've seen some human beings that are so disconnected with humanity that I would consider them to be aliens, maybe. Aside from that gang, let's call it a stream. Let's call it a stream. Thanks for being here. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the subs. Uh, thank you for the bits, uh, Kron. I know you're not around anymore, but thank you for the bits. Thank you for the love. 100%. 100%. The only hole in the conspiracy theory is do we really believe the government would do such a piss poor shitty job at the cover up like it's amateur to say the least i want i want my money back morris here's the other thing how could the most powerful military in the world have so many holes in its defense system that such a thing could happen or were was the military called down right Aaron Musk is in later. Good night, folks. Stay woke. Stay woke. Uh, nice to catch a live stream for once. Thanks, Chicho. Have a good night, brother. You too. You too, Schizo. Have a nice morning, afternoon, night. To all, to all. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Chicho and Moz. Thanks, Moz. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you for the conversations, everyone. Okay? If you can make it, crab apples tomorrow. And listing comic books on ebay for a few days next week okay take it easy take it easy good night everyone good night